Hi everyone, welcome to Big Smoke Barbecue. My name is Ashley. I am the uh, founder or the owner of Big Smoke Barbecue, and I wanted to do some YouTube videos on the business side of barbecue because I believe there's not a whole um, great deal of videos on YouTube about this subject, and I think from a from a business perspective, we need to sort of have a conversation about whether or not the person that wants to do a barbecue business, set up a bit barbecue business rather, is cut out for it, but also the steps that you need to take in order to actually open up a barbecue pop-up or business, events business in the UK, because it differs greatly from the US. Now, even just cooking stuff in the back garden or the backyard cook, you know, the, the briskets and everything is so different over here that I feel like we really need to talk more about what you can do to get the best products over here, what the best products are, where you can source these things from. And um, just in general, really talking about how to, to take that next step from cooking in the back garden or the backyard to cooking for multiple people at events, pop-ups, birthday parties, that kind of thing. And just before we get into the actual video, I wanted to let you guys know that if you haven't already noticed, my editing skills are terrible. So please bear with me on that side of it. I'm probably going to get better as time goes on. Maybe, who knows? Um, I just, at the moment, I don't really have much desire to learn how to edit videos really well. Um, all I have is my laptop here, my phone and my iPad and stuff like that. And I'm just going to be showing you some footage of the events we've done so far as a business. And by no means, by the way, am I this expert on business or running a, a barbecue pop-up business successfully. But I believe so far with what we've achieved and what I've managed to do as a, as a business, I believe that I have some pointers that may help people if they're looking to start their own barbecue pop-up business in the UK. And also, to go through how to cook some video on some videos, I want to show people how to cook some things that you would get in the UK and just really go over how to do a, a successful pop up and what in ingredients you need, what equipment you need, what you don't need, and things to look for when you're, um, when you're starting your business. Because obviously the food is the main thing, right? If, if the food isn't very good, then it really, you know, really doesn't make a difference how good you are at running a business. I don't think if the food sucks, then, you know, you shouldn't really be in barbecue anyway uh, if, if the food isn't very good. And I'm just going to kind of go through how I started what what I um, what I did to get used to cooking for large crowds, and also how I got started in the pop up side of it, and why why I even bothered with it really, and um, just try and go through this video. I'm going to showcase some pictures, like I said, and some footage of the events we've done, so it's not just me talking on the camera the whole time. Hopefully, you find this informative. I'm going to do a series of videos on this, not just this one, and I'm going to try and make this brief if I can. I probably have a tendency to ramble on a little bit, but I'm going to try and keep this brief, try and go through it all. I'm not doing this on a script or anything. This is just me talking. So uh, maybe that's why this video won't be great, but, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to transfer this over now to like a little slideshow. And I, I know a slideshow is not very fun, I know, but I don't really know how else to do this. I've tried looking at different ways to do this on a, like an editing software app, but I just, it just goes over my head. So for this video, probably isn't going to be very fun and interesting, but I'm hoping it will be to some people. Maybe if you just take a couple of pointers away from this video, then um, then that's great. So uh, let's dive on in. Right, guys. So hopefully you uh, haven't switched off already, but that was my poor attempt at an intro to a video. Honestly, if anyone can comment below on this saying how terrible I am about with the editing. Yeah, I know, I get it. You don't need to tell me that. But um, maybe some pointers for me even of, of what software to use, how to actually edit videos. I mean, yeah, I, I've done very little research on editing videos 
I've kind of just in the past done software um, videos on software where it's literally just you talking to the camera and I'm doing actual videos of me talking or a screen share um, on Skype or something and recorded that rather than actually doing like editing of some kind. But I'm just going to try and go through this with you guys and, and sort of um, take you on a little journey of how I got started and also how um, I got to the point where I'm at now and basically try and fill in the gaps in between. So this right here is a picture of the second smoker I ever bought. Uh, the first one was very similar to this, but just, just smaller again and not, not as well built, even though this isn't incredibly well built. Um, this was still very cheap. This was the very first event that I ever did. And as you can see, there isn't really much going on in the photo. This was at my friend's um, field for the local investment club that I'm part of. There was about 12 people that came to it for the barbecue event. And um, as you can see, there's a little bag of splits there going into this little firebox. I did, um, I did chuck roast. I did ribs. I think I may have done pulled pork as well. I'm not, I can't quite remember. I think I, I did definitely did a brisket point end as well, I think. And some kind of sausages like burnt ends type sausages. And this was really just a, I'm going to cook some barbecue food for my investment club friends, members. And if they don't like it, well, who cares anyway? We have a meeting once a month. So this was just an alternative way to, to have a meeting and to to let me cook some barbecue food. Now, if any of you are getting into barbecuing and or have been doing it for a while and want to cook for people, I would suggest, honestly, if you can do it at a low cost or even just get them to contribute towards the cost of the um, ingredients, I would really suggest that you, you do this because it, it pushes you to to think from a different perspective of how you're actually going to cook this food rather than just cooking for yourself. Timings, um, how you're going to serve it, all that kind of stuff really comes into it. And that sets you up nicely for if you're ever going to do a pop up because you kind of learn a lot of skills in doing these little events or even just having friends over, you know, you can just have some friends over some beers and, and some barbecue food and kind of treat it like a little mini pop up. So this is my first ever pop up. It went really well. People loved the food. I think I might have had just like a, a little table or two set up um, with just condiments and things like that for people to just help themselves with some barbecue sauce and some plates and stuff. And it, it went really well. Now, after that, a long time went by with me just cooking food and stuff. And then um, this was kind of a little bit fast forward from from when I first started, but that previous picture was in August 2021. The second picture here is around August last year, so 2022. Before that, I did a Queen's Jubilee barbecue party at my house with friends and family all got invited, and I cooked through the night on two little offsets the ones that you see on the left here, that, that was one of the smaller offsets I had. And I just did everything I pretty much knew how to do at the time. Uh, I, I did brisket, ribs, pulled pork, mac and cheese, slaw, I believe. Um, might have done some sausages or some burnt ends or something like that. Pork belly, I think I may have even done that. Can't quite remember, but that was a trial run. So I wanted people to come over and taste my food and see what they thought of it. And if I got genuinely good feedback, then I was going to consider doing a business, a barbecue pop-up business. And the reason I was going to do that is because in my area, definitely, there seems to be a distinct lack of smoked barbecue food. And at the time, even more so, that was the case. But I thought there's, there's a gap here in this market. Texas style barbecue is, is slowly making its way over to the UK and just barbecuing and, and live cook, cooking over live fire and stuff in general is becoming more popular. But I thought this is actually a really good opportunity. And if I can do this well, then I'm going to be ahead of competition that may not do it as well. Um, 
And if there are people that do better than me, then I've got some catching up to do. But there's, you know, there's a lot of mouths to feed in in count in one county and surrounding counties, let alone the town and city that you or, or I live in. I live in a small town. So for people that live in connective towns to big cities or even in big cities in general, you may have an advantage over even myself because your audience can be wider. You know, like my local community isn't huge, but it's a tight knit community, which is good, good in another way because we support each other. But in a big city, you can probably thrive and have more customers in a shorter space of time. So this Queen's Jubilee went really well. Everyone loved it. And I got really genuinely good feedback. People told me I should start as a business, which is what I did. I started a home collections business. Now, shout out to Dave Wilson's Barbecue for this because he helped me personally set this whole kind of thing in motion and give me some pointers. And this is kind of why I'm doing these videos because I want people to learn um, as well and kind of take from his videos that he's done on how he set up a barbecue business and the home collection business from home, like the, the takeaway nights. I did the same thing and we had our first one in, in July, which went great and every single one's been a huge success and after after a couple of um initial posts about me starting a business with this one of my um one of my relatives one of my aunties got in touch and said can you do a birthday party for me for for a second birthday party and in which case obviously then you see on the right hand side the burger that i made i wasn't going to do burgers at all I was dead against doing any kind of burgers. I wanted it to be strictly Texas style barbecue. But I realized that not everybody knows what brisket is. Not everyone knows how to to smoke anything and no one really and people don't know what smoked food tastes like in some cases, especially in the UK. But everyone knows what a good burger tastes like. So I thought maybe this could be an entry level item to people to get used to having my food and then maybe try the smoked barbecue. And also for this birthday party, I wasn't going to start cooking brisket for a two-year-old and her friends. So I thought burgers and hot dogs would be the way to go. This picture of me cooking, this wasn't actually anything smoked. I used this smoker as a charcoal barbecue sort of direct heat cooker for me to cook smash burgers on. And it went that well that pretty much everybody there said that they were some of the best barbecue, the best burgers they've ever had. And that they couldn't wait to try the, try the barbecue stuff if the burgers are that good, which is kind of what I had in my mind that people would would say that because if the burgers are good, then hopefully they would think the barbecue would be, be be even better. And I think that it is. I think it's a lot better than burgers. Now, there is one problem with me selling burgers, and that is that the best burger chain or the best burger restaurant in the UK is literally my local restaurant. Um, so I live in Herefordshire. In Hereford, where I was born, and I live 15, 20 minutes away from Hereford, um, and I'm in Hereford every day with my with my job, this company, the Beefy Boys, are the best UK barbecue, uh, UK burger restaurant. So for me to compete against them would be a really stupid idea, I think. And um, if anyone wants to go and get a good burger, they go to Beefy Boys. They don't really go anywhere else. And so I didn't want to be known as the burger guy because it's not why I got into barbecuing and certainly why it's not why I bought an offset and learned how to cook all this stuff to just whip up some, some smash burgers. But burgers became a part of the menu. And this is something that I think maybe you might find if you're getting into barbecuing. Maybe you might have to explore some other avenues to bring in some revenue. And of course, burgers are a very easy money maker. And I hope people don't mind me saying that. It's, you know, it's easy money. You know, you can flip these burgers and they take a couple of minutes and, the, and you've got a real nice, real nice burger. Whereas a brisket takes, as you may know, takes several, several hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, sometimes longer. And the rest period as well, the trimming, the seasoning, all of the barbecue items take a long time and they're very expensive. There's more, um, you know, there's more margin in burgers in less time, but I'm not a fast food restaurant. And at the same time, I don't do this because of the money. The money just follows as part of it's a byproduct of the barbecue food. So that was our first real sort of family event pop up type thing that we did that wasn't just the home collections after starting the business. Then in October last year, I got in touch with my local paper. Now, this is something that you really need to do if you're ever going to start a business. Explore the avenues of which you can 
get some free advertising because social media is absolutely phenomenal for that. You know, Instagram's free. People moan about the algorithm and everything else and how slow it takes to grow on there and Facebook. It's literally free, right? You you, you go to a billboard company or a, a company that advertises on the side of the road on these, you know, banners and stuff, and you ask them how much they're going to charge. It's a lot of money. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter or X, um, YouTube, all these, all these avenues are free. So you really need to get on as many of those platforms as you can. TikTok as well. I'm guilty of that, by the way. I've not been on TikTok and I should have done. I feel like I kind of missed the boat now and I'm just going to focus on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. But um, get in touch with your local papers, right? Now, I hadn't really succeeded by a great deal at this point. This was just my sort of boost. You know, I was going to try and showcase myself to the local community. And um, I'd done a few home collections by this point. I'd done a pop-up. Uh, we also did a festival, which I haven't included in the pictures. That didn't go very well. And I'm going to get into that in a minute after I've just explained about the, the Hereford Times and the, the thing that followed. So got in touch with them and said, I'm starting this business. I've done this business for a few months. I think it'd be a really good thing for you to cover. They came over, took pictures as me holding the firebox, door, the smoker door open with some ribs, mac and cheese, and a few other bits on there. Um, they did a whole page on me and my business and um, my smoker from Texas and Herefordshire man is taking the plunge after opening a new catering business. This was fantastic exposure for me and my business. It was free. And then my local radio station got in touch with me, BBC Hereford and Worcester, and they wanted to do a piece on, on me and my business to go live on the radio. Now, this sort of thing, this all just happened as a spiral, but it was free. So of course I agreed. They they got in touch with me. They they wanted me to to do this, and they came to my house. And the Hereford, the the BBC Hereford and Worcester van came along, and she was recording me in the back garden, talking about my business and going through the smokers and everything else. And all of that happened just by me getting in touch with the papers. I'd already done this once before when I very first started, and I tried to be clever and send an email to the person that I thought it would get the 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 email first. And actually, I don't even know if it got delivered. So I tried again. That's another thing. Failure. You know, I could have said, oh, well, other papers aren't going to get in touch with me. So it is what it is. I persevered and I tried again. Now, on the back of that, the radio interview went so well. I showcased it online. I shared it. It was really good. Everyone that listened to it said I sounded really good. And it was fantastic to hear the feedback. That helped me grow my business again. And you know, going back to that, festival which I just mentioned a minute ago I did um, a festival at a pub local pub it was our very first ever pop-up of ever anything like that all we had was our tables and our food we got placed in the corner by the hedge kind of out the way um, we went house on the food the guy was expecting me to get loads and loads of customers and loads of people through the door so we kind of went really over the top and I we basically I bought way too much food. I, bought, I didn't know how to, to cater for people really at that point. And I, I just went all out and I was just buying like, I bought like three briskets, like eight racks of ribs, two, four pork shoulders, sorry. I did, literally did two shifts cooking on my, my smoker, my 200 gallon smoker. Couldn't cope with it. Now, at any event I do now, I manage to cook it all on that one smoker. I pretty much do a limited menu, like a limited amount. I do like one of everything pretty much. And then like three or four racks of ribs or something. And that really works out well for the amount of people that we sell to. But again, I was new to this, didn't didn't know much. I just went all out, spent like a thousand pound on food. And I think we lost about 400 pound on that event, which was obviously really, uh, really hard to take for our first event. And the, the, the annoying thing is as well, we sold a lot of food. And if I'd have bought nowhere near as much, we would have made a real nice profit. But you live and learn. That's one of the things you need to take from this is, you know, also as well, I could have just said, oh, well, this isn't going to work and then never do any pop ups. You, you just persevere. On the left is one of our very first trays we ever sent out to our customers when we did the home collections. And I know. At the time, I thought that looked fantastic. That looked absolutely amazing. You know, this is such a great looking tray. And then. As time goes on, you look back and think, ah, oh, that wasn't too great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, of course. You know, you've got some ribs on there, some pulled pork. Um, I 
think there may have been some brisket underneath there somewhere, a big thing of slaw, some weirdly cut shaped pickles and some mac and cheese. This was a takeaway tray, by the way. That was around July, August last year. Now, fast forward to the one on the right. That is our tray from a brewery we did in May. And um, the picture kind of the bark on those ribs at the top looks really weird, but they weren't that dark in real life. I don't know why they, they look like that. But you've got ribs, you've got brisket, pork belly, um, poor pork, slaw, pickles, brioche loaf, red pickles, um, red pickled onions, mustard barbecue sauce on a big tray, mac and cheese. Now, that particular tray, the person that had that food come back to me and said that was the best food he's ever had in his whole life. And it's important to appreciate the progression of things over time. You know, you learn things as you go along, you get better, maybe you get worse at things. I like to think you get better with time. Um, now, this was our very first pop-up we did in public. There's me, thumbs up, there's my van. There's our very um, elaborate, <laughs> a very elaborate pop-up setup right there. We've got literally some pallets that they, they let us use. A table behind it, my whiteboard that was on my wall at my old house, and our tables behind, literally serving food from that table section um, with the Canberra, I think was in the van. Uh, I don't even know if I had a Canberra at that point, actually. I think I may have just had like some warming trays or something. Um, and as you can see, it was a limited menu. It was a midweek event. I don't like doing midweek ones too much. We had two burgers, a pork pork roll, and pork belly and pork ribs. And we sold out, which was amazing. You know, that first initial feeling of selling out is something that, you know, the, the feeling of selling out at an event is something you can't replace. It's absolutely phenomenal. And um, this was a video from the event, um, which was really cool. They got me slicing in some pork belly there, shredding up some pork pork, and there's some pictures of people with the food. Um, this big bike event, it was really, really cool. We um, basically had, it was a, a local um, veteran run business that hosts these big motorbike events once a month on a Thursday. So we went there, did this pop up. I've got everything set up there. It was such an amazing feeling to be part of this, this event. And this point was really where we felt, you know, we're, we're starting to get somewhere with this. This was the very beginning of it all very basic setup i think that table that i'm doing all that on was one they let us borrow as well because i didn't even have many tables didn't have a gazebo or anything at that point so it was quite interesting um fast forward literally a month or two that's the setup on the right hand side just a simple gazebo there's our famous little whiteboard there i edited and made a little um banner to go across the bottom some flags table little griddle this was at a local holiday park where we sold out again and we sold out. We took even more food this time for this event. And, th and there were some burgers, there was tacos and I th I'm pretty sure, um, I can't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure I took some barbecue items as well um, for that one. And we sold out and that was our most profitable one at the time. Shortly after that, on the left-hand side, as you'll see, I got in touch with uh, Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast. Now, Dan and Owen, fantastic guys. Again, this is something that you really need to do if you're going to start a business. I mean, maybe leave it a little bit of time like I did to get sort of established and, and understand kind of what you're doing and, and give them a reason to actually want to interview you because, you know, if you just started out, they might not really want to because you're you're not really showing anything that's worth seeing as such so just keep posting on instagram facebook youtube social media of any kind just keep posting all the time this interview really helped me i i really am so pleased that i got to go on this podcast because it allowed me to reach out to barbecue people and I just went on Facebook and put something like in a, in the Country Wood Smoke group, I think it was, or UK Barbecue group, saying anyone that runs a podcast, please get in touch. I'd really like to to um, be on on a podcast. I'm really look, looking at you know being interviewed on one. I got in touch with these guys on Instagram, and we set a date, and we pretty much 
we just went through it all and, and did the interview there and that's on youtube as well you can find that if you type in meet and greet barbecue podcast big smoke barbecue you'll find it i got quite a lot of um, interest in my business from that some followers and stuff like that and and there's some really really high-end people on that podcast so to be amongst those people and mentioned in the same breath it really is an honor so again use the avenues you have this this again was free you know this didn't cost me anything just my time you need to really reach out and think outside the box and try and put yourself out there this is the same event just a different picture as you can see the setup a little bit better um just a couple of tables really nothing special and that's another thing as well you know you can really go all out if you want to you can get a food truck you can do all this kind of stuff but our latest event that we did last weekend that event we sold out and it was the most profitable event we've ever had it was the busiest event we've ever had with barbecue food and we couldn't have got a food truck in there because it was in the little garden section of their their sort of like coffee house beer garden type setup we had some tables underneath their shelter in and that was it so having a food truck and expensive stuff like that is great but what i'm really conscious about is my outgoings and my, and my you know what I have to make to to break even. I I don't have, have any overheads. I literally have my insurances that I need, and that's it. You know, I don't have any monthly fees of anything. I don't have a huge food truck that I need to pay off. I don't have staff or anything like that. We have this humble setup, a pop up gazebo, some tables, food warmers, and things like that, and it just works. This was a following event. We did. It was a last minute one. Somebody had some caterers. They dropped out and they wanted me to do some food. I And I couldn't really have done any barbecue food by that time. I had to have ordered all the stuff in. So we just did burgers and tacos and mac and cheese. And again, the same kind of setup. We served food to over 120 guests at this party. It was six hours nonstop. And all I had was a little electric griddle. There was like an hour wait on food. And... People told me afterwards, they come up to me with some amazing feedback saying that these were some of the best burgers they ever had in their lives. And they thought they were they were better than other barbecue, uh, better, other burger restaurants locally, which I don't agree with, but that's their opinion, I guess. And it's nice to have that feedback. People really genuinely love the food. And they said that wherever we're going to be next time, they're going to come along, which is great. Now, this was in August, so very recent all my best friends, I wanted to host a big barbecue party for my friends and for them to try the barbecue food if they haven't already and to kind of showcase what I can do. This was a huge spread of barbecue food that everyone tucked into. We've got pork belly, mac and cheese, brisket, pulled pork, ribs, mustard barbecue sauce, slaw, brioche loaf, pickled red onions, sausages, um, Everything basically that you could want in a barbecue platter is all on there. Everybody loved the food and it was great to to do this. Now, go back 12 months, 18 months, there's no way I could have cooked this food. Not to this standard anyway. I mean, this food was, was really, really good. Here is one of my videos from a pop-up we did in a local brewery. So this is maybe something a little bit more interesting for you to look at. Hopefully something a bit more... Um, bit more informative you can see how we're operating here so obviously the mac and cheese going into these trays that's our setup there um just very simple we've got the burrito tacos going on there a really big fan favorite as well people love those tacos you can follow my instagram as well big smoke bbq uk that was the tray that i showcased earlier another one from the same event again just my van just a pop-up um Ludlow Brewery, they were great. We're going back there again in a couple of weeks' time. I feel like every event we do, the food's getting better. I'm learning new things. And um, you just kind of need to really just go for it, I think, if you are going to set this up. We've got blackboards. They're little blackboards. I've actually got a big board now, which I'm going to use for a menu. That's something that I think you'd be better off getting, some menu boards made or something, because... Those little boards aren't very good. But we had a fantastic day. Big queues. Everyone enjoyed it. We sold out again. This was one very recently we did. The gazebos had a bit of an upgrade. We've had some sides bought <laughs> for it to stop the wind. That was another thing as well. I, had a, I bought a big gas griddle and um, 
the gas kept going out because of the wind. So we had to make a like a makeshift shelter thing for it. And now we've got the the sides. That really helps. This was an American horse festival we did, which I we were there all day. It was our biggest ever event. It was it was a massive effort from I mean look at the van, it's full of stuff. Double gazebo setup, nice brisket and everything else. And we were sold out of that in an hour, the brisket. Some cool footage from the event. There's our uh, <laughs> there's our double gazebo. And um, yeah, it was it was so fun doing these events. And it's such good memories as well because you look back on it and you remember the days that you did and remember the pop-ups and the events and all the hard work that goes into it. And it was just fantastic, such a good event. This was one of the brew we did, uh, Overbite Brew House we did recently. This was such an amazing, fun event. Uh, it was so fun, really enjoyed it. There's some ribs there. And the food's just got better and better as time goes on. That's the cool little brew house. That was our little setup again. It was ram packed in there. We sold out again. The brewery tacos, everyone loved. Everyone loved the food, the brisk. Everything had such amazing reviews and feedback. We really did um, did really well there with that. And everyone just loved it, so that was great. And that was that was the pop up there again. Just a little gazebo, nothing special, just just basic stuff. But it works, and that's the main thing. This was a, the same event we did recently, just a different video on it. And um, just something humble. I think people like that as well. They can see that you're, um, you know, you're not just trying to impress. It's very humble. It's very basic. It's very, um, you know, it's very, uh, what would you call it? Humble, I would say, is, is the right one. Now, now, please bear with me on this. I didn't expect it to cut out. There we go. Right. Um, so this has been about half an hour video. This is kind of just an overview. This isn't the whole video. This is just a snippet of it. I know it's been about half an hour, but I just wanted to go for, over how we started from the beginning to now so you can kind of see the progress. Now, one thing I would say is you're better off getting a big gas griddle if you're going to use one like a flat top. You don't have to get anything expensive like a Blackstone or anything like that. You can just get a, a, a normal, you know, basic one. I've got a, a Delonda, I think it is, a four-burner gas grill from Amazon, £256, I believe it was. That thing's really, really good. It's good for burgers, tacos, anything else you want to heat up on a flat top. I have a Cambro, and for the money, I don't think it was worth it, really. It's good to have the, the slots for the gastro pans and everything to go in, but I really don't think it was worth the money. You don't need one. One thing I would suggest is you get a warming oven of some kind. I also have a generator, which I don't think was worth the money either. It may be in the future, but honestly, when you do pop-ups, just ask them for electric. And if they can't cater for electric, then it is what it is. There's only been one place that hasn't given us any electric so far. So use their electric, take a warmer. So you can get a countertop warmer. It's like an oven that's about about this big. It's, it's like a, a camping oven. Um, you can you can look them up on, on Amazon or wherever. Um, countertop oven. Make sure you get one that goes low enough in temperature to around 65, 60 degrees Celsius, because obviously that's going to be the holding temperature for your food. So when you transport it to an event, you can plug the, the warmer in. Now these aren't big so you can probably fit a brisket and maybe some ribs and pork belly and stuff in there and that's about it you may want to get two of them i don't know i have an auto sham i've taken that to events before that is a massive pain that is so heavy it's annoying it's clunky it's just a nightmare but it's so useful when you're in an event you plug it in the food obviously stays warm all day because you've got it set to to a hot hold um, I'm just conscious that transporting that around all the time is probably going to make it break at some point and they're not cheap. So that's another thing to be mindful of. Now, if you have got a Cambro, put a pan in the bottom of hot water just before you leave and put the food in. That will help keep the temperature up. And if you can, if you've got a kettle or something on site, you can just keep topping it up with really hot water. That will help keep it nice and, and warm in there. That prolongs the, the life of the, the food as such, a hot temperature, a safe temperature as well. Um, there's another couple of things that I think you, you need. Um, obviously, things like gastronom pans are really useful. They're expensive, but they're so useful for transporting food, for hot holding sides and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
You should do a checklist as well of what you need and what you're going to take with you so that you remember it every time. Also a card machine like a sum up. Sum up is the one we use, it's just a little little white machine that you just charge and, and it's contactless for card payments. And then you've got the app as well and it all just goes through there. That's really useful. There's also Zettel and a few others. Um, but first and foremost, obviously the barbecue food. If the food's great, people will come. One thing I think in, in, I didn't explain was how we got to actually do the pop-ups. So I emailed lots of people. I was emailing breweries, industrial estate companies. I was putting on Facebook. I was advertising saying, you know, I've got this barbecue business. I'm really looking forward to potentially doing some local local stuff with um, with our business. I want to do pop-ups, events, and that kind of thing. I was reaching out to pubs. Um, anything I could really think of that would, would work and that would like us there. Breweries, again, um, Ludlow Brewery, that was a, that was me reaching out to them. And they got in touch with us and we've done a pop-up there already and we're going back there in a couple of weeks' time. Um, now, we're doing a pop-up at a pumpkin patch, uh, Halloween pumpkin picking sort of event this year on the 30th and 31st of October, so a big two-day event over Halloween. I got in touch with them because I thought that would be a great thing. You know, all these types of events, festivals, that kind of thing, you really need to reach out to people, email them. You're going to get no's. You're not going to get any response at all. You're going to get people that say they might be interested and they're not. They're going to be people that want to charge you pitch fees. That's something I really think you need to be aware of. Um, you really need to challenge that with some people if they are going to charge you a pitch fee. It needs to be worthwhile. Most Most pop-ups we've done, I think there's only been one or two that we've actually paid for. Um, one of them was a charity, so I don't mind that, obviously. But we've had a few people say they really want us there, and then they've told us that it's £100 pitch fee for the day, um, in which case we've said there's no chance on paying that, and, and we haven't done it. You know, you really need to be sort of picky as well and kind of get some some info from them. You know, why why do you want us there? And how many people do you roughly seem to get? Is, is it usually busy? Is it hit and miss? What's the what's the feedback like on the events? Have a look on their Facebook and social media pages to see if they have regular pop-ups as well. Because if they don't, then, you know, that can work in your favor. But also it might be a real risk because you don't know how many people are going to turn up. Um, one thing I would say is it's always better to sell less, to, to make less food and sell out than make too much and have loads of leftover. That's something I've really struggled with and I've and I've learned from over, over the, the year and a bit that we've been doing this. Also, we did a pop up at a pub. So we took over the kitchen as such. We ran the kitchen. We had pre-orders the week before. So everyone pre-ordered what they wanted and it they was given a table and a time for their table. And then um, we'd also have takeaways and walk-ins and stuff as well. Now, at the time, this sounded like a fantastic idea, but actually it was a nightmare. And um, we lost quite a bit of money because people cancelled. Some people didn't turn up because there was no deposits on the tables. And um, I cooked a lot more food than I needed to because there were some tables at five and some tables at eight. And the tables that were at eight o'clock, I didn't want them to get there and travel for them to, for us to say, oh, sorry, we, we've sold out when they've actually specifically ordered that item. It works well in a restaurant setting, but not for a barbecue pop-up. So I would really strongly recommend that you do not do any pub pop-ups where you're actually going to be working internally. Um, a pub pop-up is great. We've done we've done several of those where we've actually just been set up outside on the footage of the, the one we did earlier with the big American flag on the outside with the gazebo, um, the gazebo windbreaker things. That was at a pub, but they weren't serving food. So... They were, we were the only ones there selling food. It worked out great for them because they got money on their, on their drinks and they worked out well for us because we got money on the food. So that was good. But please, I would say really think about it if you're going to do a, pop, a pub pop up and you're going to be the one in the kitchen because then it, it's a whole different world. Also, make sure that you're the one taking the money. Because at this pop, pop up, they took the money behind the bar and then we, we had to like tally it up and there was, discrepancies there was arguments of how much money that we owed them and how much money they owed us and actually um they didn't make they didn't make loads of money on the bar so we need to 
we need to pay them and that they had a different figure in their head to how much we had you know we added up all the tickets and it came to a, to a fee to, a, to a, an amount and they said that in the till the amount was different and it was all a big mess we lost a couple of hundred pound on that event i think it was about 300 pound in total we lost on that event we did have some product left over though which was good but that's a massive learning curve you really need to to start out so you're not losing money really uh, and it's been a it's been quite a um process going through that i mean we did a pop up at the caravan place that i said about the 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 caravan park we sold out there we went back four weeks later and we sold food to 10 people all evening we we lost about 300 pound and i think all the profit we made from the last one went because we we um we lost money on that it's going to happen you're going to get events that are going to go and be bigger than you thought some are going to be quieter than you thought but try and cook the same sort of amount that you get used to so that you're not just randomly ordering stuff i would say also that if you're going to do pop-ups you need to check out john davidson's for their xm gold briskets fantastic some of the best in the uk i believe they are grass-fed but they're heritage angus and um, hereford beef and i'm glad that i get to use hereford beef because that's where i'm from and um kind of makes sense that if i can use hereford beef i will um all their other products are great it comes in a big box as well and it's it's um flash frozen so you've got a couple of days, you can order it in advance, leave it in the house, it will defrost naturally over the next couple of days, and then you can you can cook it. Also, you can reuse the big boxes as well, and they're quite handy. Try a local butcher if you can, but from my experience, local butchers, again, this is nothing, nothing against them, it's just that they don't quite get the smoked meat side of it. Now, Hereford beef is one of the best you can get, and at my local butcher's, the briskets that I get from there just aren't quite good enough for low and slow. For steaks and whatever, their their meat is absolutely amazing. But for low and slow brisket, it's just not good. The fat content isn't there. The intermuscular fat, the marbling isn't there. So John Davidson's, Tom Hickson of Smithfield as well, maybe. I've not actually used them, but I've heard good things about them. Um, I would try, like I said, John Davidson's XM Gold Brisket. It's not extortionate money um they're, they're good they're, they're reasonable with their prices and um john's been really really helpful to me and he's 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 really um really helped me with last minute orders and things like that also ribs go to farm foods get the swift frozen ribs 10.99 a rack they are fantastic i um went to the wilson's barbecue and the chud's barbecue masterclass in um banbury in oxfordshire uh, a couple of weeks ago fantastic event and they use the swift ribs there and um that's kind of where i i got the idea to use them from because i've been using other ribs and they've been great but these ribs were phenomenal um try local for pulled pork if you can get pork shoulder with a bone in then you can use local because they're going to be the same kind of thing and also the pork in the uk is very good so i would suggest if you can go to local butchers do that but you have to be really picky with what you ask for, you know, skin off, um, Boston butt style trim, which some butchers may not understand. So in a lot of cases, it is really worth just getting almost all of it from John Davidson's online and um, asking if maybe he can put you through a package together where you get a bit of bit of money off or something if you're going to be a regular customer. But if, if you are getting into starting a, a pop-up business who are thinking about it honestly gazebo tables um of course you need to register with the council so get in touch with the local council to register a business and if you're going to do it from a home initially which is what i strongly suggest doing the home collection side of it because you can use a thing called um store kit so if you go online and sign up for store kit you can create a menu on there people can pre-order and then you can buy the food and cook it without any risk because they've already paid for it up front. Get in touch with your local authorities, the, the food standards agency, and get them to come and basically assess the business. Um, having a hand washing sink separate to the normal sink is a must. I've got pets and I just ensure that they're not in, in the kitchen when we're doing any food prep. Everything's deep clean before and 
hygien hygienic and everything's all done properly. They get them to come out, give you a food hygiene rating. We've got five star rating, which is fantastic to have that that five rating. And um, I think it's really important that you you try and get that because if you don't get five, people are going to be a bit funny about foods and obviously understandably so. Um, having a five star rating really does help. And um, the woman came out, she watched me trim a brisket basically and then I put it on the smoker, cleaned up after myself, went through the business model, how we operate and that was pretty much good enough to get five stars. They didn't come out for about nine months. So, you know, it's one of those things, they do take their time. If you're going to do an events only pop-up business, then it slightly differs. You need to make sure you've got hand washing facilities, so a, a flask or a kettle that you can heat up on a gas grill, a gas grill or a burner of some kind. Um, yeah, hand washing, pot washing facilities, and um, foods raised up off the floor on the tables. Obviously, that kind of stuff. Um, everything's kept at a safe to eat temperature, so above one four five Fahrenheit. Um, everything's cooked to the right doneness. You also need to do fridge checks, temperature checks, all that kind of stuff to make sure it's all above board. Kind of annoying, you know, boring, mundane stuff, but it really is necessary. You have to do this. You have to register it with the council if you're going to do a food business. And I believe it's a month before you plan on um, operating. If you've started doing pop-ups and then you thought, oh no, I need to do this. It's not the end of the world, but you really, you should try and do this first. And once you've done that, then you can start getting a gazebo. I mean, I think mine was a two and a half meter by two and a half meter one. I think it was about 120 pounds. The tables were about 50 pounds each. So, you know, you're probably looking at about 500 pounds startup cost. Obviously, depending on what smoker you've got, I've got a gator pit from Houston, a big 300, uh, 750 kilogram, uh, 200 odd gallon pit. That was a separate thing. You know, that's not running a barbecue business cost because assuming you've already got a smoker of some kind, then, you know, that's kind of factored into it. Um, depending on what smoker you're going to use, of course, that's up to you. Um, it, it's entirely, entirely up to you what you use. And, um, you know, I've just got a big offset, but you can use a pellet grill. You can use whatever you want. It's completely up to you. But try and get something, if you haven't already, get something that's going to be big enough and maybe bigger than you really need so that you're never going to struggle for space. And something that's well built and obviously can turn out great barbecue. Because if you're going to do a business, then you kind of need to have good barbecue, right? So, again, this goes without saying, obviously, look on YouTube, learn, learn how to cook different things, get better at it, practice, invite friends over for some for some barbecue. Some, you can even just do half chickens or turkey or something. It doesn't have to be too expensive. Pork shoulders, stuff like that. It doesn't have to be brisket. It can be whatever. Um, but once you've got this set up, reach out to people online facebook local community groups are really key that is that that is a, a almost like a hack really local facebook groups post in there you're starting this business you want to do pop-ups please get in touch showcase pictures videos of you doing barbecue stuff obviously it's really important that you have good pictures again you don't have to do this but one thing that really helped or was helping me is my photos and my content right I see so many people when they go to a restaurant, they take pictures of their food and they literally just go, yeah, click, that'll do, post it online. They've got no filters, they've got no lighting, nothing. And that's fine if you're just going to take a picture of your food, but why post it online if you're not going to actually go to the effort of making that food look good? Maybe not so much for other people's food. You might not really care too much about making their food look great, but for your own, you really need to. You can get these backdrop things. They're like just cardboard with some some kind of design on it usually at two in a board and they sit like this and then you can put the food in front of it or on the board so you've not got like your toaster and your kettle or the wash in behind in um in the photos of your food right you want it to be professional so these things really help they're quite cheap you can get them on amazon for about 15 20 pounds the other thing you need as well is a good um good camera for your phone most phones have good cameras these days um I've also got this light. It's just like a square rectangular shaped looking light thing that you hold when you're taking photos of your food. So the, I'll hold my phone like this. I'll, I'll hold it so it's like above the food like that or below or whatever. If I hold it below like this, what I'll do is I'll put the, the light. So I should have probably got the light to show you. But I'll hold the light here or above it 
so that the camera is shining straight down with the light. So I'll hold it like this, put the light, hold the light there, and then I'll just um, I'll just press the, one of the buttons on my phone to um, take the picture. Having lighting is so important. It really makes everything look great. You know, you really need to be mindful of the photos you're taking, which is why we do platters and trays with pickles, pickled red onions, that kind of stuff on there to really make the thing the thing pop. That's why I like doing mac and cheese as well, because the vibrant colours, people eat with their eyes first. And if the food looks dull online, they're not going to rush out to try it in person because it's going to look dull and crap. Now, if it's uninviting, it's not a very good place to start. Even I would argue that this is maybe even more important than the quality of the food to begin with. Having great pictures of your food is so is so key because at least then people think, wow, that looks good. They might never try it, but at least they'll follow what you're doing because the food does look great. Try and take as many reels as you can of the videos of, and videos of your your cooking and your food because that really helps for posting content. Now, by no means am I an Instagram expert. In fact, I don't really get how it works, to be honest. I just keep posting stuff and hoping for the best. So, you know, that, that's that. You just keep posting, keep posting and just hope that it works. Because, I mean, I'm... We're, just under 850 followers now. Nothing great, obviously, but I started on zero like everybody else. And um, I'm just going to keep posting. We've got events booked up now. People are coming to us to ask for events, which is really good. Also, for me, I, I understand I'm in, a, I'm in a position where I'm quite fortunate because I'm self-employed that I have a lot of my own free time is in terms of my schedule. I can say, well, I'm not going to work that day or I'm going to have this day off. I don't have to book annual leave or anything like that. So for those of you that are employed, maybe it's a little bit of a different or difficult thing, but I would suggest doing your pop-ups on a Sunday in the afternoon so that you can cook on a Saturday and not have to sacrifice your um, your annual leave. And then you can, you can um, have some time to yourself, maybe another, you know, you're going to lose time for yourself one way or another, but what I usually do is I book a Friday off. I will cook on the Friday for an event on a Saturday. And obviously, if you're doing a Saturday event, you can't do that. So you're going to have to try and juggle it around a little bit or take some annual leave if you really want to. Um, if you're self-employed like myself, then it just it just works really well because you can, I mean, obviously, I lose money because I'm self-employed. So if I have a day off, I need to try and make that back at the event. I've also got a separate bank account for my for my Big Smoke Barbecue business. And I, what I, what I do, this is entirely up to you. Obviously, it depends on your money situation. But everything I make at the barbecue events gets put into the account. I have a credit card, which I buy all the the meat on first. So I'll go to John Davidson's online. I'll pay for the food on my credit card. Not because I haven't got the money. It's just this is the best way to do it, in my opinion. You pay for it on the credit card. You do the event. Once you get the money from the event from sum up, and you put the cash in the bank or whatever. You then pay off the credit card. So it's building the credit rating for yourself. You've also shown that you can pay off credit cards a lot and you don't have to worry about finding the money initially because you can utilize that credit. That also allows you a bit more freedom and um, you can then put the, the other bits and bobs that you need on the credit card. All my Amazon purchases I buy with a credit card, then I'll do an event and pay it off. It just works out really well that way. That, that way I haven't got to find the cash first or dip into the, the actual account first i can i can just buy the stuff on the on the account and then um then i can then i can pay it off so all the money we make on the account i don't take a wage from it i uh i basically just um put all of it in there and i just i'm trying to see it grow i want to see this business account grow what i'm going to do eventually is that money is going to pay for my trip to texas where i'm going to go to laurie and lewis and a few other places work there for a couple of days and showcase it and record it all and learn some things from them and really hopefully um bring that knowledge back to the uk and do some videos on it so that i can become a bit more of a youtube um person you know i know that youtube can be massive and I also know, by the way, this video has gone on far too long, but you know we're approaching an hour. But I really believe that if you can break this down into sections, you're going to learn a lot of things um, initially from just this video. 
And I'm hoping that the, the footage you saw of me doing events can really just give you some motivation to actually just do it. Because honestly, if you just say yes to doing an event, it's so much better than saying, oh, well, you know, I don't really know. I'm not too confident on doing these types of events. Just say yes. Obviously, if it's free as well, you're not paying for a pop-up fee or a pitch fee. What have you got to lose? Just just go for it. Honestly, you'll find that you'll you'll learn how to, to do it, right? We did not that horse festival. There was no electric. I got a generator. We were there all day. We had the two big gazebos in the middle of a field and we just made it work. It worked. I mean, we didn't make a great deal of money, but you know, money isn't always the key. You do need to make money for these events, but if you can make your money back and maybe a little bit more and you gain experience and you also get feedback and customers that really love the food and are willing to follow you and come to your next events and you build um, some kind of momentum you got good content to post online. That's a win anyway. So that always helps. Now, I really hope this was informative and useful. Hope you weren't too bored. I'm sorry if the last 15, 20 minutes I've really been like reading off things because I didn't want it to go too long. Um, but maybe an hour is way too long for a video. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to break it up into two parts. We'll see. Um, I think I might do that. I don't know yet. But please keep an eye out for more content. I'm going to do some videos of me actually cooking stuff as well and going through little bits of what I've explained in this video in more depth, not just reading it off and saying, this is how you run a business. I'm going to do specific little clips and videos on, on some things that you may, um, may find useful. So if this was helpful, if you've not been bored to tears and you found something useful from this and you've taken something from it, please let me know in the comments below. Please also, like I said, let me know how I can become better at editing videos because you may be laughing at me with this video because it is, I know it's bad. I know it's not going to be very good to, to look at, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. And um, yeah, just a massive thank you for watching and um, I will catch you again soon. Thanks.